Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here in front of Dad's truck. And I just finished installing a new or remanufactured automatic transmission in Dad's truck. I got it from Jags, it's working great. But what I thought I'd do for today's video is share with you five tips for installing a new or remanufactured automatic transmission in your vehicle. If you are installing a new or remanufactured automatic transmission in your vehicle, most likely it came with a set of instructions. I strongly suggest, in fact, I insist you read through those instructions and follow them to the letter. If you want your transmission to last, if you don't want to void your warranty, you really should read those instructions and follow them. So I guess number one is follow the instructions that come with the transmission. Number one is flush the transmission cooler. And if you have an automatic transmission in your vehicle, there's a very high probability there's a couple of lines going off of it, going to the radiator or a component in front of the radiator as a separate cooler. Whenever you have an automatic transmission failure, it's highly likely that there's a bunch of debris that gets embedded in the fluid and goes everywhere throughout the entire system including into that cooler if you don't flush it out all that debris and all that bad fluid when you start it up is going to go right into your new transmission and ruin it so you want to be sure to flush that out the way I do this is with some off-the-shelf uh, aerosol cans that you can hook up to the cooler lines and just spray it through and it rinses the whole thing out. And when you do flush the transmission, you want to try and flush it in the opposite direction of flow. So if the fluid normally goes from the top line to the radiator and then back in on the bottom line, you want to flush it through the bottom line and back through that top line. I hope that makes sense. Number two. If you are replacing the automatic transmission in your vehicle, you must also replace the torque converter. So in other words, you can't put a new automatic transmission in with your old torque converter for the same reason you want to flush the cooler. The cooler is filled with contaminated fluid and possibly debris. The torque converter, same thing. And trust me when I say there's really no good way of flushing out a torque converter. So your best bet is to replace it along with the transmission. Most likely it's going to come with a new torque converter, but if your transmission does not come with a new torque converter, be sure to get a new one. Otherwise, you could be in the same boat. Number three, before installing the new transmission, be sure to check torque converter fitment first. And I've learned this through the School of Hard Knocks. What I mean by when I say this is remove the torque converter or take your new torque converter and put it up against the back of the engine and make sure that it fits inside of the crankshaft in particular because the torque converter has a nose on it. It has to fit into the back of the crankshaft. Also make sure that the bolts line up so that you can fasten it to the uh, flex plate. Otherwise, you'll get the transmission all the way up in there and you'll try to get it together and it won't go together and that really sucks. So you want to be sure to avoid that issue by checking torque converter fitment before you ever install the transmission. Number four, before installing the torque converter in your transmission, be sure to fill it with new automatic transmission fluid. Otherwise, you could ruin your brand new torque converter. So before you install the torque converter, you have to fill it up with automatic transmission fluid. And believe me, it will take a lot more than you think. Just be sure to get as much as you can in there. Never install a torque converter dry. That's the big takeaway from number four. Do not install torque converters dry without filling them up first. Before you install the torque converter, take a little bit of automatic transmission fluid and go around the outside of this seal, especially if it's dry because it could roll over or get damaged during the process of installation of the torque converter. This is the seal for the lockup torque converter, by the way. And that brings us to number five. After you've filled up that torque converter and you install it in the front of the transmission, you need to make sure that it's fully seated down inside the transmission. In fact, there are like three different things at the very least that need to be engaged when that torque converter goes into the transmission. That's the lockup clutch, that's the input shaft of the transmission, and also the keyway that goes into the front pump of the transmission to run the pump. So if all of those things don't engage, or possibly more things, if all of those things don't engage when the torque converter is installed, well, your transmission's not going to work right. In fact, in some instructions, you may find that there's a measurement you can do between the bell housing and the front of the transmission or the front of the torque converter after you've installed it to make sure that it's fully seated. This part is very important. Make sure you fully seat the torque converter when you install it. Quick tip. As I mentioned earlier in the video, make sure you follow all the instructions that the manufacturer or remanufacturer of the transmission you're installing. One tip though that I've found is adding a little bit of blue Loctite to the torque converter fasteners. Uh, this helps keep them from working themselves loose. Don't ask me how I know this. Just know that it's a good tip that could help you. You're welcome. And there you have it. Five tips for installing a new or remanufactured automatic transmission in your vehicle. Follow these things and that transmission should last a good long time and you shouldn't have to worry about it again, especially follow the instructions that came with whatever transmission you're installing. That's super important. Otherwise, if you have questions, I put links down in the description of additional information stuff that uh, pertains to this video. I'm also going to put a link to ericthecarguy.com if you have questions outside of what was covered in this video. Otherwise, I'm Eric the Car Guy. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.